So yes, hi, good evening everybody. So yes, can you all see me? So yes, hi, good evening all of you. Welcome to the class. Yes, hi, Adira. <clears throat> good evening. Yes, Kumar, good evening. Yeah, good evening to all you people. Yeah. So can you all see me, guys? Is everything fine? Okay. So good evening guys, welcome to the class. So today in this particular session, we'll be discussing on the topic as to the top most expected MCQs and economics related current affairs for the upcoming UPC prelims examination. So this is lecture number two guys, already on, uh, I think on uh, April 6th, we had another other lecture, right? So today we'll be having the part two of the MCQs based on economics related current affairs. So yes, everybody ready? Yes. Okay, so shall we start guys? So this is Nisha Nujumuddin. I'm an economics faculty specialized in handling sessions for various competitive examinations like UPSC, UGC Net Bank exam, etc. Okay, one second guys. So I'm also teaching live at Unacademy Plus guys. Uh, uh, so if you want to follow me there, you have to get a subscription of Unacademy. And for that, uh, if you need any discounts, I can help you out with my discount code. That is nisha.nujumuddin. That is my referral code. So if you have not got the subscription for Unacademy Plus, do get your subscriptions very fast because a lot of teachers, around 50 plus top educators are teaching live on Unacademy Plus on various subjects. So... So yes, guys, is everything fine? Okay, fine. <clears throat> so you can use my referral code that is nisha.nujumuddin and get a discount of 10 to 20 percent when you are doing a subscription for Unacademy Plus. Okay, so because I'll be doing a lot of uh, lessons on Unacademy Plus as to uh, see, uh, I'm doing two different courses there. One is a crash course on Indian economy. And the second one is a quick revision of yearly current affairs right from June 2000, uh, 2018 to April 2019 through 1200 MCQs with the proper explanations. I'm doing an MCQ course on Unacademy Plus that is each month I'll be doing an, uh, a set of 100 MCQs. So apart from that, uh, my newly launched course for the month of April is a gist of Niti Aayog. So a complete gist of Niti Aayog uh, uh, that also I'll be doing uh, keeping in mind the upcoming UPSC prelim examination so a set of uh, from paper 2 and 3 a set of topics will be taken say around 41 to 45 topics will be taken and a complete coverage of the topics will be done in a very easy manner so that will be a quick revision for you with respect to your upcoming UPC prelims examination so if you want to uh, you know have access to all those courses you have to get a subscription on academy plus guys and not only my lectures even many other top faculties are teaching there for various subjects so you can use my referral code that is nisha.nujumuddin to get the discount and if you do face any difficulty in subscription, literally you can uh, message me via Facebook Messenger so I can help you out. Okay, very fine. So yes, shall we start? Okay. <clears throat> Yes, some people are busy about, uh, I mean, from where I am, guys, listen uh, to those who all said, uh, uh, literally, uh, you know, you want Hindi. See, I'm a South Indian, so I do take classes only in English. 
so please do follow the class in english and if you do have any doubt please feel free to ask me okay is everything fine okay so yes shall we start guys so welcome to today's session guys and the 11th question is with reference to the recently signed inter credit agreement that is ica consider the following statements so the first one tells the ic was framed under the aegis of the indian bank association and also was signed by 24 public private and foreign banks in india second one tells the ic was framed as a part of project sahat under the recommendations of a committee called the sunil mehta committee on stressed asset resolution here your npl comes non performing assets issue comes so quickly give me the right answers guys option number a tells only one b only two c both one and two is right and d tells neither one or two is right so yes with reference to your ica give, quickly give me the right answers let me see today who are going to be the right answers <clears throat> yes nidhi okay nidhi you are facing issues with your internet connection okay no problem nidhi but uh, if possible try to attend yeah yes bijay hi okay here comes uh, 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 suri with b gorav with b okay but i can see abhishek gupta with option number c both one and two is right at suri is damn confident it is option number b 100% confident wonderful suri but then i can get some a answers also from uh, somebody called ruble and josh i can get a answers only one is right really as usual parvinder ashok all are going with option b okay adhir and sugrithi even the girls okay they are very confident with b yes jadav even you are going with b okay what about the others yes hi good evening i pin okay even you are going with b wow only two is right so i can get a mixture of answers some are saying a some are saying b some are saying c but majority of answers i can get from b i think Yes, here comes Anivesh with B. Yes, Anivesh, even you are saying B. And yes, guys, the answer is option number C. So I think very few people said yes. Wonderful, Selva Kumar, uh, you have given the right answer. It is option number C. I think Selva, uh, Akshay, and uh, who else? That's it. Only two people gave a guys. Wow, that's amazing. Only you two people gave the right answer. So kudos to you people for the right answer. And you deserve a chocolate, guys. It is both one and two statements are perfectly right. Let me tell you why it is like that. if you see what is this inter credit agreement guys if you see your ica actually it was framed under the aegis of the indian bank association and literally your inter credit agreement it follows the recommendations of a committee called as sunil mehta committee based on what stressed asset resolution what are stressed assets guys when the mnc's or the multinational corporate or corporates for example say vijay malya when they take loans from all these commercial banks and when they do not even repay back the interest or when they do not even turn back and look at it even during the period of 30 days the bank will send a warning to them so that time whatever loan has been taken by these big shots that particular loan or will turn out to be a stress asset okay and on the completion of the 90th day that is 3 months time that stressed asset will become a bad loan or np that is non performing assets okay so now on the stressed asset resolution only some recommendations are given by mr sohan mehta committee so that to avoid or reduce the problem of npa now if you see your inter credit agreement it has been executed by 24 public private and foreign lenders in our country india under a project called as sashak project so that they'll be able to resolve the problems of stressed assets in our country okay and thus if you see even your nbfcs that is non banking financial intermediaries sorry companies they are also expected to sign this particular agreement and thus to whom all this uh, inter credit agreement is applicable guys if you see it is applicable to all the uh, corporate borrowers who have literally got a loan that is for example let's say because of vijay malya again the corporate borrower who has got the loan for um, for an amount of rupees 50 crore or more only if you take a loan of more than 50 crore or more only to that corporate borrower this particular inter credit agreement is applicable okay and thus the lender with the highest exposure for example again vijay malay he is he is a, he's a lender he is a borrower right he has literally created the problem when pay now the lender with the eyes exposure to a stressed borrower they will be authorized to formulate what the resolution plan which later will be presented to all the lenders for the approval and thus i can tell you the inter creditor agreement was signed recently by 24 leading banks okay very fine yes yokita you have asked a question is this session beneficial for bank exam uh you uh, yokita if you are appearing for rba grade b the economics syllabus is more or less similar you have current affairs there this is for upsc examination what i am doing right now yeah but certain questions will be beneficial for you okay very fine 
Yes, Anivesh, uh, you are telling 20, it is 24 now, Anivesh. Just check it out re, as per the 2018-19 data. Uh, Adira, it is under the project. See, uh, by 24 public, private and foreign lenders in India under a project called as Sasak project. Theek hai? Very fine. Perfect, perfect. Okay. And what is this project, Sasak, guys? What is that? Do you want me to say that? Okay, I can't see. Yes, guys. Yes, tell me what is Project Sashat? What is that? Nobody, I can't see any answers of you people. One second, guys, let me just check out. Yes. Yes, I've got a lot of answers to reduce NPA. I've got uh, to strengthen the banks. Yes, Parivendar, yes. Actually, this particular pro uh, project, Saskat, is actually to help the banks to overcome the problem of non-performing assets because we have seen that over some years, uh, two to three years, the pro problem of NP is literally causing a lot of issues for our country, right? So, to overcome that and also to strengthen, what in what way? To strengthen in terms of financial stability, to make sure that the health of the bank or the financial stability of the bank is maintained in a proper way only, this particular project has been put forward, okay? Okay, okay guys. Yes, all your answers are perfectly right. Yes. Now, moving on to the next one is, consider the following statement. So, first one says, over the last five years, okay, the FDI, that is foreign direct investment inflow into India has steadily increased. Second one tells, as per the FDI confidence index, there is an index called as foreign direct investment uh, confidence index, okay, of 2018. India is one of the top 10 countries. In terms of it, attractiveness. Look at the keyword. In terms of what? Attractiveness. That is attracting to invest more in our country. Take care. Now, which of the following statements are correct? Option A, it is only one. B, only two. C, it is both. One and two is right. And D, it is neither one nor two is right. So, yes, quickly give me the right answers, guys. Yes, here comes Shyam with C. Both are right. Wow, that's amazing. Let me see how many of you are going to give me the right answers. Shubham is saying B. Uh, Zemo is saying C again. Okay. Shobit is so confident. Shobit, Suri and Sugirti is so confident with C. Both one and two is perfectly right. Okay, guys. Wonderful. Think and say. As for the index, the confidence index, FDI confidence index only, India is one of the top 10 countries in terms of attractiveness. Think and say. So here, Parivinder, you can't change the answer. I think already you said some answer, I believe. Oh, you said TK. Okay, okay. Fine, fine. Yes, Yash is saying A, Anivesh is saying B, Parivindra is A. Why Parivindra B is wrong? Eh? Okay. Yes, here comes Udit Sharma. Yes, Udit, you are so confident with option number A. Wow. A lot of answers. Yes, Anivesh, you have a doubt. Uh, I will just note down that and I will explain to you after the class. Okay. Consortium lending, right? I have noted down Anivesh, okay. Yes, Aditya is saying D. Lock the answer D. He has come with a different option. Aditya and Shubankar is saying D. Neither one or two. So, I can get a lot of answers like A. Some are saying C. Some are saying D also even. Okay. Yes, Aditya, I saw your answer D. Okay. And yes, the answer is option number A. So, yes, kudos to those who give the right answer. It is option A. How many of you gave? Only one. Yes, Aditya Kumar. Wonderful. You give the right answer. Gaurav gave. Then nobody else I believe. Rest everybody went with B and C. Even Selva Kumar gave. Yes, yes, that's good. 
Udit, you also give. Yeah, yes, you people deserve a chocolate. And so very few people give the right answer. It is option A. That is only the first statement is right. That is why I told you initially to uh, look on the key statement. As per what index? FDI confidence index. India is one of the top 10 countries in terms of attractiveness. Yes, our country is one of the countries for attracting more and more FDI. But as per the previous index, that is not the case. We are not 10. We, we have just, we were 10 before. We were into the 10th rank before. But now as per the current data, it is not like that. Okay. That's if you see. Uh, over the last five years, literally the FDI inflow, the flow of F for direct investment into our country has steadily increased. And I have given you the year wise increase in, to, uh, you know, your total foreign direct investment. If you see in the year 2013-14, it was 36.05. 14-15 increased to 45. 15 also to 55. Then 16 and it was 60. Then uh, after that only a gradual or a minor change has happened. Uh, that is 61%. Okay. So, uh, if you see, literally, initially it was like from 36 to 45 to 55 to 60, it was going just like that. But then in 17, 18, what happened? Just only a minor change happened. Not much of an increase, I can tell you. It is just increased gradually. Okay. But thus, if you see, as per, uh, you know, the reason 2018 data, India ranks 11th position, guys. It is not 10th. That is why the second statement is wrong. Actually, India is not one of the top 10 countries. It doesn't come in the top 10. Rather, it is in the 11th position. That is why the second statement is wrong. Very fine. And thus, uh, it is as per, uh, you know, the uh, Kearney FDA Confidence Index. And in, and in 2018, if you see, India has fallen out, out of the top 10 destinations for FDI in terms of its attractiveness. And this is as per an AT Kearney FDA Confidence Index report. Very fine. Did you understand? Perfect. Yes, yes, you too said A. Wow, so so many people with A. Acha, Adira, you too gave uh, A, Adira. Ha, that's nice. Yes, Aditya Kumar, B is not right, Aditya. B is wrong only, na? As per the FDI confidence uh, index, India is not top 10, 11. The B is wrong, and only A is right. Any confusions? Fine. Very fine. Okay. So I can't. Uh, uh, one second, guys. Okay. Mm -hmm. Fine. Shall we go to the next question? And the 13th question is Consider the following statements about recently launched Krishi Kalyan Abhiyan. So, yes, option number one tells it will be undertaken in some villages located only in aspirational districts. Look at the keyword, only in aspirational district. Second one tells it will run till farmers' income are doubled. That is by the year 2022. That is what the government is saying that uh, the farmers' income is expected to double by the year 2022. They have given a target like that. Now, it may even exceed that. But as per Krishi Kalyan Abhayan, they are saying that till the farmers' income are doubled, this particular scheme will continue. Third one tells the overall coordination and implementation of the action plans for each of the district. That will be the responsibility of your Niti Aayog. So, National Institute of Transforming India. So, quickly give the right answers. I will give a clue to you. Look at the second option. It is not necessary that it will run. Okay. And the first one, yeah, it is correct. Because the Krishi Kalyan Abhin is for the aspirational district. That is true. But what about the third one? Is it done by Niti Is it the response of Niti Aayog? So now the first one is correct. More or less it is right because aspirational districts are coming. So now in your answers, you have to choose any of the code. So it could only be option A or one and it could be one and two. It can never be uh, C or D. Think and say. Yes, I can get a lot of answers. Sometimes it can be two and three also. See, D also. Okay, that is two and three. Think and say. Yes, Adria with A, Shyam with A. Nitesh is saying A, very confident. Yes, Komal, you are also going with A. But I can see uh, uh, Pramaditya with C. Uh, Parivinder is also saying C, okay. Jadav C, but, but Yash is saying D. Two and three, Yash, very confident. Think and look, look at the second point. It will run. That means this scheme will literally go on till the farmer's income are double. That means no change will be there, no revision will be there. That is the whole point. Think and say. 
Here comes Vijay with one and two. Okay, Vijay. Yes, yes, Udit. I am trying to little bit confuse you. Let me see who will give the right answer. No, no, Parivinder, you already said the answer. You can't change. Yes, a lot. Yes, Arif is saying A. Okay, guys, and the answer is option number A. So, yes, kudos to all you giving the right answer. It is absolutely option number A. That is only the first statement is correct, whereas the remaining two, two and three is wrong. Let's let's see why it is like that. So, I think today a lot of people are getting uh, chocolates. So, I won't give. Okay, I'll give you a happiness dairy instead. So, yes, guys, if you see the Ministry of Agriculture and Farmers Welfare in line with the Prime Minister's vision or aim of doubling the income of farmers by the year 2022, they only launched the Abhiyan called as Krishi Kalyan Abhiyan. And when they do that, they literally launched it in the year 2018. Okay, so from June 2018 to July 2018, from June 1st to July 31st, for that particular period only, uh, this particular Abhiyan called as Krishi Kalyan Abhiyan was launched. And why do they do that? In order to advise or help or assist the farmers on how to improve their farming techniques and also to increase the income. That is why they came with this. Look at your question guys. In the second statement, they say it is said that it will run, means continue till the farmers income are doubled. Which means that it will continue for so many years. But as for the Krishi Kalyan Abhiyan, it was for a very short duration of time. Starting from 1st June 2018 to 31st July 2018. That's it. That was one month perfectly. One, two months, right? That's all. Okay. After that, you never had this. So, that, that is why the second one is wrong. And what about the third one? The overall coordination. That will be the responsibility of Niti Ayog, they said. That is also wrong. Why? If you see, this Krishi Kalyan Abhiyan, that will be undertaken in 25 villages. With more than how much population? 1000 population. And each of this population, guys, they come under the aspirational district program. After identifying those villages, first they'll identify whether these villages are coming under the aspirational district program of the central government after consulting with the Ministry of Rural Development as per the directions given by Niti Aayog. Actually, uh, the overall coordination implementation is not the responsibility of Niti Aayog. Rather, the Niti Aayog will give their directions. The question, see, the third one, why it is wrong is Niti Aayog is having a part in Krishi Kalyan Abhiyan, but only for giving directions or guidelines. But the coordination and responsibility and implementation is not with them. It is actually with whom? It is actually uh, with the Ministry of uh, uh, Ministry of Rural Development. Take care. Fine. Very fine. And thus, if you see in districts where the number of villages, if you see with more than 1000 population is less than 25, in that case, then all the villages will be covered. Actually, under Krishi Kalyan Abhiyan, they wanted to undertake 25 villages with a population of 1000 each. But there are some villages where the population will only be 500 or 300. It will be very less sometimes. In such a situation, uh, since the population is less than one village means they'll be able to cover more villages from this 25 it can go to 30 or 35 village also depending on the number of population did you understand but if one village is having thousand say like 25 villages are having thousand thousand population each then they cannot include more villages but if they do not have that sufficient population then from 25 that number of villages can even increase to 30 or 35 very fine Yes, guys, what is happening? Yes, Sahil Khan. Sahil Khan is asking me, ma'am, uh, what uh, are you are concentrating? Why are you? What what are you? I didn't understand what you're trying to say. Anyway, the whole idea is uh, uh, he is trying to ask me, am I concentrating only on selected students? See, Sahil, I do not know any of the students personally. I know them through my classes only. So every students are equal for me. So whoever I see in the messages, because a lot of messages come. There is a uh, you know gap of at least uh, two to three seconds after you putting the message. I I can see only after one or two seconds. Take care. It's like that. So now because it's again uh, live live streaming. So whoever I see, I just call out. Okay. And and I know a lot of students uh, uh, regularly because they continuously attend the classes. That's the whole point, Sahil. Okay. Yes, Sakshi. You are late today. No problem, Sakshi. We just crossed only three questions. Okay. <clears throat> Very fine. Uh, Udit, the uniqueness of this particular Kalyan, uh, uh, Krishi Kalyan Abhinis, it's for a very short duration of time. They took it for a very small period of time. Okay. And do you know about the aspirational district program? Do you want to tell about that quickly? Aspirational district program. Yes. 
yes uh, yes guys i uh, okay okay jadav i'll say okay sakshi yes yes i'll tell about the aspirational district program okay perfect Guys, one second, give me a. Yeah. So, yes. Uh... Yes, Sugrati, I'll tell you that. Uh, one second. Yes, Satyendra, I'll do that. See, Aspiration District Program. Actually, it is uh, the transformation of Aspiration District Program. It was launched in the year 2018. In previous year 2018 only, your Aspiration District Program was launched. Okay. And the aim is to effectively, effectively and very quickly transform the most underdeveloped districts of the country. That is the whole point why the government came up with the program called as Aspiration District Program to develop the rural area as a whole. Okay. And now if you see the Niti Aayog, which is uh, literally uh, having the, uh, you know, responsibility, not the complete responsibility, but as for the directions of Niti Aayog only, that will be done. So now if you see the government think tank, that is the Niti Aayog, they released a second delta ranking of your aspirational district program. That is they measure how much of progress has taken place in each of the districts with reference to the aspirational district program. Take care. And uh, if you see, based on the six development areas, or that is health, education, agriculture, water resources, then financial inclusion, skill development and basic infrastructure. Based on this six areas, only they will measure the progress or development of that particular district, which comes under the program called as aspirational district program, whether they have improved on that. That is how they will how they'll rank it. Take care. And if you see old, out of 115 aspirational district guys, in that program, 115 aspirational districts, out of that, only 111 aspirational district guys, they participated in the survey conducted. Take care. And if you see there are certain districts from West Bengal which did not participate in the survey conducted by Niti Aayog and all. It is actually to identify whether the districts have literally improved with reference to all these basic parameters. Okay. That is, they want to effectively and quickly transform the most underdeveloped districts of the country. And through this program called as Aspirational District Program, I can tell you that it envisages a rapid development of what? of the selected districts on the basis of you know certain composite indexes like your education index your health index your skill development index your basic infrastructure index etc so based on those selected indicators now they will measure the progress of that uh, area whereby a rapid transformation will take place fine and thus i can tell you this particular aspirational district program it is actually a it promotes convergence of your central and state sponsored scheme it is not only really the centrally sponsored scheme even the state sponsored scheme also if this particular aspirational district program provides a convergence take care very fine clear Yes, Akshu, uh, you are seeing new, new on this platform and you want to learn these from the first. Akshu can regularly follow the classes. So when you regularly follow the classes, you will get an idea. Okay. You can also follow, uh, you can also follow me on the Unacademy recording uh, platform, free recording platform and also on the plus. Perfect. Okay, Amit. Okay. See, Rohit, come on. I, I, I told you this before also. I am from South India and I do take class only in uh, English. I am not a faculty who take classes in uh, Hindi. That's the point. Okay. You can follow uh, follow it in English. You can ask me doubts if it arises. Yes, Sugurti, you had a doubt uh, regarding who releases it. Now, Sugurti, it is Kearney report. They only releases the FDI confidence uh, report of 2018. Okay. Perfect. Okay. Now, Yes, Aditya, my laptop is having problem. Why? Are you not able to see me properly? Guys, is everything fine? Okay, clear. Fine, fine. Okay, Danish. Okay. 
perfect and now moving on to the next question so we, i have even give you a lot of information also regarding uh, that you can just go through now moving on to the next question is consider the following statements about ioe that is institutions of eminence scheme option number one tells each institution selected as institutions of eminence they'll get a financial assistance up to rupees 1000 crore over a period of five years second one tells the aim of this particular scheme is to bring higher educational institutions which are selected as institute of eminence in the top 500 of world ranking in the next five years so now you have to tell me the right answers which of these statements are right option a tells only one is right b tells only two is right and c tells both one and two and you can see the one or two yes quickly give me the right answers guys Yes, I can see uh, some, somebody, NTN, what is your name? Okay, you are saying B, okay. Shrindi is saying only two again. Yes, is saying B. Aditya, you better answer instead of, uh, you know, telling this to Aditya. Now she's going to tell something to you, Aditya. Anyways. Yes, Manisha is saying two, okay. Yes, Umesh is saying only B. Why the first one cannot be right? The thing can say. What are institutions of eminence, guys? Will they get a financial assistance of up to 1000 crore for a period of 5 years? Think and say. Yes, Anivesh is with B. Sagar Singh B. Okay. Shrikant, Shivendra, uh, every, uh, Rahul, uh, all are saying again C. Both 1 and 2 is right. Wonderful. Ashok is saying D. Okay, Ashok. Jadavi Singh B. Only 2. Yes, here comes Pavan Kumar. So confident with B. Only two is the right answer. Wonderful. Ajay is saying C. But Suri is saying no, no. 100% Suri is confident with B. Okay, Suri. Now, Sugriti is coming with an entirely different option. She is saying neither one or two. I think nobody so far gave D. Yeah, even Pradeep gave. Okay. You are saying both are wrong. Okay, fine. And even Udit is saying C. Both are right. Udit is saying the opposite. Okay. So, a lot of a different answers. I can get B, C and D answers. And even A also some like Shashidhar is giving A again. Uh, Amit is also saying A. Okay. And yes guys the answer is option number D. So yes kudos to Sugurdi and uh, other people for the right answer. It is option number D. Neither one or two statements are correct guys. Take care. If you see regarding institutions of eminence. What is the aim? The Literally the aim of uh, this particular institution of eminence scheme is to bring the higher educational institutions. Both your public and private. Okay. Uh, which have been selected as institutions of uh, eminence in the top 500 of the world ranking in how many years in the next 10 years and top 100 eventually over time look at your question guys what was the key word in the question the key word in the question was they want to literally uh, in the next five years, that is they want to bring in the high educational in the top 500 of world ranking it is not like, uh, like that it is in the top 100 of world ranking in the next 10 years it is not five years just because of the keyword 5 and 500, your second statement was wrong. Did you understand? Very fine. Yes, yes, uh, so, so good, you deserve chocolate. Yes. Yeah, I think Nitesh was thinking about it, but he didn't say the answer. Okay. So, that is the reason the second statement is wrong. Very fine. Fine. And now, this particular scheme, it has been launched with an objective in order to provide world-class teaching, I can tell you. They want to provide a world-class teaching and research facilities to whom? To the Indian students within the country so that it will increase or enhance the general level of education in the country. So, in, at short and simple, I can tell you, they wanted to improve the quality of education by providing them with the best world-class teaching and facilities, research facilities. That is why they came with the scheme called as Institution of Eminence Scheme. Okay. And now the first one tells what? The first statement tells that these institutions which come under the Institution of Eminence, they will get assistance up to 1000 crore for a period of 5 years. That is again wrong. Why? Because if you see, they will get, uh, uh, if you see each public uh, institution, uh, 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 they will get uh, assistance of up to 100 crore over the period of 5 years under the scheme. Okay. Very fine. Guys, one second. Guys, one second.
okay now under this particular institution of eminent scheme if you see they will have the freedom to choose their own path to become world class institutions okay now the institutions that will be selected as institution of eminence by whom by a committee called as empowered expert committee which is literally constituted for this particular purpose and thus i can tell you the empowered expert committee they shall conduct the appraisal based on the 15 years strategic vision plan and also the 5 years implementation plan and also there is some other measure of demonstrated commitment they literally follow that okay so thus whichever institute should be selected as the institute of eminence they has to be literally approved by a committee called as empowered Ex uh, expert committee very fine yeah amit kumar one second that's what even i paused in a bit uh, in the middle okay uh, it is not uh, it is actually not 1000 uh, it is 100 because the typing mistake okay guys in the explanation uh, actually both the statements are wrong okay uh, that is it is not 1000 uh, crore it is 100 crore please make it in this it is correct in the question in the explanation just uh, it cut 10 okay very fine guys okay abhishek are you very sure okay parivinder give me a minute okay Parivinder, just remind me after the end of the uh, questions to discuss the same question number fourteen. Okay, guys, uh, this question number fourteen I'll discuss with you once again after completing the remaining questions. Okay, there is a slight change in that. Okay, fine. Okay. Now the next question is the first move summit was hosted in India by which of the organizations? Look at the keyword first move summit. Okay. Option A is its Niti Aayog, B is UN Habitat, C is World Economic Forum, and D is International Renewable Energy, Energy Agency. So, quickly give the right answers, guys. Parivinder, yes, I will discuss the fourteenth question. Do not worry. Let me finish the remaining questions. I will discuss with that with you that. Okay. <clears throat> For the state-owned institutions and all that, Parvinder, it is actually ten years with ten uh, thousand crore. I'll tell you how it is. Yes, here comes Kriti with D. Kishle Kumar is A. Okay, hi, Janani is also saying A. Niti Aayog. So very confident, but I can see Baskar with UN Habitat and Shyam Singh C. World Economic Forum. Okay, oh here comes Pradeep with D. International Renewable Energy Agency. What about Parvinder is A. Okay. Within the same C, Gaurav is also C. Okay, I can get a lot of answers. Yes, Shailaja, even you are saying C. So confident. World Economic Forum. So I can get a lot of A, B, C, and D answers also. But majority, I'm getting A and uh, C. I think. Okay, and yes, guys, the answer is option number A. So yes, kudos to all you people for the right answer. It is option number A. That is Niti Aayog. None other than a Niti Aayog. Uh, uh, nobody else can do this, right? If you see to showcase innovation. and to build a platform guys to shape the future mobility what did the national institute of transforming india do literally a niti aayog they hosted the first move summit in the year 2018 okay literally they hosted in the previous year and thus if you see this particular uh, move summit it it was the it was the first global mobility summit it's actually mobility summit okay of its kind with over 
1200 participants they expected around 1200 participants and more or less they they were the number was up to that okay from across all from the world including people from diverse areas like uh, industrialist uh, research pe organization people government leadership academics people think tanks and civil society organizations very fine yes agash you you were right this time yes and you know what this global move summit when uh, niti ayog uh, when literally they announced literally in the previous year 2018 when they organized this move summit that is global mobility summit in, in new delhi only they did it okay new delhi they want to make sure that they having a collaboration with various ministries and industry partners to strengthen and deepen the relationship with various ministries and industry partners only this particular move that is global mobility summit was conducted in new delhi and the initiative was taken by niti ayog okay and this particular summit if you see the move um, uh, summit it was inaugurated by a prime minister narendra modi and it also featured a lot of uh, you know political leaders that is global political leaders from the mobility space a lot of people took part uh, part in this particular summit in the previous year and why did they come up with this guys the main aim of this particular summit that is move summit if you see it is actually to drive it will help drive what the government's goal for vehicle electrification then for renewable uh, energy integration and job growth also employment then also speeding up india's transition to a clean energy economy very fine they just want to transform guys actually this move summit the aim is what you know why organize such a kind of summit uh, our government they wanted to uh, bring together and engage all the key stakeholders uh with in the process of rapidly transforming a global mobility landscape and also to make sure evolve a kind of public interest in the framework for a shared connected uh, development for the future as a whole theek hai very fine any doubt okay perfect perfect clear okay sugurthi thank you ashtosh yes adri is giving all the right answers i'm so happy I'm happy that she's a Malayali also giving all the right answers. Now, moving on the next question is the Startup India Yatra is an initiative that is related to what? Option A tells development of startup ecosystems in villages, B tells the search for entrepreneurial talent in tier 2 and tier 3 cities. Look at the keyword tier 2 and tier 3 cities, okay? It's very important. Third one tells awareness workshop on the startup in initiative being held at technical universities across the country. fourth one startup india's hub international bilateral cooperation with countries having strong startup ecosystems quickly give me the right answers guys okay yes suri you have asked a question why was the planning commission replaced by niti ayog suri i will note down it suri and i will answer to you theek hai i am noting down your uh, doubts towards the end i'll answer okay Yes guys answers please Here comes Pooja uh, Pooja Porul with C but Pooja Sharma is also with C okay Yes Avinash is C I can get a lot of C answers guys awareness workshop really okay See you do not have select the right code like A or B or A or C or C or D you have to go for the option with the highest priority so think and say Let me see how many of you are going to get the happiness diary with chocolates today from me from Japan. I have some Japanese chocolate also with me today. So let me see how many of you are going to get that for the all the right answers. So yes, I think there are a lot of uh, you know C answers, but I think I can see Udit Sharma. Yes, here goes Udit Sharma with option B. Yeah, that that's that makes a possibility. Udit, wonderful. Even Kriti and Amula is also saying uh, B. Oh, Sugar, the amount of believe in you are saying B. Okay, Jada. Okay, Rose and all are saying B. but i can see yes uh, aka akshay and all saying c so most of you are confused with b and c na now look at yes he is shifting to a yes you can change the answer 
And yes, guys, the answer is option number B. So yes, kudos to those who give the right answer. It is option number B. That is actually the Startup India Yatra. It is an initiative to search for most on, uh, important or most potential entrepreneurial talent in tier two and tier three cities. Okay. And that's if you see this initiative, which travels to the tier two and tier three cities of India. in order to make sure that they are searching the uh, young potential entrepreneurial talent and also helping those people to develop a startup ecosystem in short and simple i can tell you that they wanted to increase the entrepreneurial activity of the country that is why they came up with startup india yatra initiative theek okay? hai and thus this particular initiative i can tell you the startup yatras <clears throat> it has covered the states of gujarat uttar pradesh and odisha and if you see literally more uh, hi hi guys is it fine can you all see me now Yes, guys, is it okay? Am I audible and visible to you people? Okay, perfect, perfect. I'm sorry, guys. Actually, my laptop got switched off and it got hanged, so that's why I took some minutes. Sorry for that. So we were discussing regarding this startup yatra, right? The startup yatra initiative. Okay. So as I was saying, guys, regarding the startup yatra initiative, if you see this particular startup yatra, okay, actually it covered the states of Gujarat, Uttar Pradesh, and Odisha, where more than eighteen thousand young entrepreneurs. They were supported through what? Through proper guidance and mentorship, in order to bring out the entrepreneurial talent in them and also help them to start develop a ecosystem, which is uh, having a nature of startup there. In a way, the employment opportunity will also be increased, right? Now you can connect this point of startup in India Yatra initiative. Apart from developing the entrepreneurial talent, in a way, it is a kind of self-employment also, right? Whereby the unemployment rate of the country will also come down because when people are coming with more and more startup. Obviously, the unemployment issue that is coming down, right? So in that way also you can connect. So thus, I can tell you this particular startup India Yatra. When was it launched? It was launched on July 39, 2018. Okay, on the previous year on July 30, 2018 only, this particular startup India Yatra was launched. And that was it was launched in uh, Raipur, guys, in the city of Chhattisgarh. Okay, and initially itself when they launched, they could see a load of a large number of students. to uh, who were literally on the queues to register themselves for this particular startup in the india yatra initiative theek hai and from there on right from chatisgarh from there on this particular scheme called as startup india yatra it traveled to so many places other places and thus uh, you can see that uh, many places of chatisgarh and also other areas uh, other states also this particular startup in, uh, yatra initiative could cover okay actually the key highlights of your startup india yatra is to uh, it one is that it is equipped with facilities for individuals and also the startup to pitch their ideas second thing is this particular startup india yatra they also conduct campaigns okay where the students are taught certain lessons in uh, business planning and all so in a way while they are studying itself they getting a idea as to how they should uh, you know have a proper business plan and all that is also one of the other most important highlights of startup india that is why majority of you gave me answer number uh, you know b Uh, sorry see because uh, literally they do awareness your startup india yatra also give awareness uh, workshop uh, uh, for uh, many universities across the country but the thing is it it was said that uh, in the question awareness workshop on startup india initiative been held at technical university it's not like they do it only in technical university that is why the third one was wrong they do give awareness to students uh, so out of these options because of the technical university only the third one was wrong so uh, 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 and if you uh, see the remaining options only the second one was the matchable one okay very fine did you understand guys those who give answer number c why you got confused okay and now moving on to the next question is okay and the next question is which among the following countries military expenditures nearly 2% of their gdp that is gross domestic product that means whatever defense or military expenditure they are doing literally it is 2% of gdp option 1 tells usa 2 china 3 russia 4 india quickly give me the right answers guys option a tells all the four b tells 2 and 4 c tells 2 and 3 and d tells 3 and 4 so even the recent budget of 2019 20 also 
we are we were, we were seeing that now around 30 uh, 30 lakh crore so so much of amount was literally allocated for the different sector as a whole and india has literally even our in the budget uh, piyush goel said that even if more fund is required we will be allocating for the different expenditure because maintenance of peace and order is very very important for the growth and development of a country so that means that lot of military expenditure we are spending our country india i give a clue to you people now the question is two percent of gdp that is the whole point so now which of the countries two percent of gdp nearly two percent comprises of military expenditure quickly give the right answer yes here comes odit charva with b only two and four china and india okay that's a good uh, answer but uh, rita is saying only china but uh, rita you have to select the right code only china there is no option yes pavan is also very confident b yes akshay is saying a akash is saying c uh, Mutsher is saying again C, uh, 3, that is, you mean C, okay. Amula is saying A, all the above is right, Amula, okay. Ravi Ranjan is also saying uh, uh, 3, um, uh, that means, uh, you mean 2 and 3. So, I can get a load of uh, A answers and C answers. Oh, Baskar commit D, 3 and 4, Russia and India. Sakshi is so confident, it could not be any other option other than D. Okay, damn confident, enough. Sakshi, let me see who all are going to get the chocolates. Other is also D. Wonderful. Sudhir A. Where are you other people? A lot of answers. Yes, Naveen is A. Jesser is A. Suri, 100% of Suri, it is A. All the above. And yes, guys, the answer is option number B. So, who gave me B? I think very few. Nobody gave, huh? Yeah. Nobody gave me B answer. 2 and 4. I think people gave. Yes, yes, some people gave. Yes, Prabhu. Yeah, yeah, yes. So, yes, congrats to those who gave the B, uh, right answer that is B, guys. That is only China and India. If you see these two countries, the military expenditure is nearly 2% of GDP. And even as far as India's uh, recent budget is concerned, that is interim budget is concerned, the 2019-20 budget also literally a lot of focus was given on the defense expenditure. Even the government is literally willing to spend more also for that. So, in that case, I can tell you nearly 2% of our GDP comprises of what expenditure? Military expenditure. And thus, if you see... The most appropriate option among all these uh, uh, options are, uh, would be option number B, that is 2 and 4. Okay, look at, have a look at the estimate. If you see, USA with 3.5, Russia with 4.3, China with 1.9, India with 1.5. Okay, and Pakistan with 3.5. So now if you see literally, the question was what? The question was, is nearly 2% of GDP. They never asked more than 2% or less than 2% or more than 3%. They asked nearly 2%. The keyword is nearly 2%. That is why your answer is option number B. That is 2 and 4. Very clear? Wow, that's amazing. Sugurdi, even use it B. Okay. Acha, Sudhir, we half correct. No problem. We'll make it full correct in the coming questions. Okay. Okay, Yash is asking why, why am I getting easy questions wrong? Yash, sometimes it happens. Silly mistakes. The, that is called a silly mistakes. So, the more and more you practice, you the, your tendency to give silly mistakes will reduce. Okay. Fine. Now, the next option, a uh, question is, which one, uh, with which one of the following state or central legislation is Mission Birbala and Project Prahari closely related? This is an interesting question, guys. Okay. Option number A tells Maharashtra prevents eradication of human sacrifice and other inhuman even and agori practices and Black Magic Act of 2013. Then, second one tells the protection of Manipur People's Bill 2015. C tells Assam Witch Hunting Act of 2015. And D tells Arunachal Freedom of Religion Act of 1978. So, you can, it's a very, very simple question. So, those who literally, uh, you know. guys one second let me check my internet is not uh, slow wait let me check no, it's fast only really. is it fine is it okay guys So, yes, I can get a lot of answers. Uh, Amit with D. Okay, Amit is so confident. It could be D. Yes, Arthur is A. Aditi also D. 
Rosie saying C as I'm rich hunting. Okay, Suri is also so confident as I'm rich uh, hunting. Yes, Sudhir, it is not uh, Geo. I am using ACT. Act. It's very fast actually. Yes, Pradeep is saying uh, C. Yes, there is. It's difficult. Okay, guys, think and say this is it's actually very interesting also because all the black magic, all the witch kind of things now. It's a project like that. So, yes, yes, guys, the answers, please. Uh, yes, is so confident. Sure, short, sure, it is B. Really? Why it can't be C or A? Think and say. Because I've got a lot of C answers. Here comes Vijay with D. Okay, look at yes, she's changing it to C now. Ayyapan is saying A, Udit is C. And yes, guys, the answer is option number C. So, kudos to those who give the right answer. It is option number C. It is related to Assam witch hunting. TKM. If you see, press, uh, President Ramnath Kovind assent to the bill against this witch hunting in Assam. Now, what it is, they, they passed it three years ago. And that has literally rejuvenated the campaign of a barely literate uh, 65 year old women guys against the superstition that has claimed the scores of life because there was a superstition in that particular uh, place of Assam where they used to uh, literally uh, kill people okay on the name of witch hunting like that so that's one particular old woman if you see Miss Birbala uh, Raba she has been campaigning against this witch hunting after almost a, uh, after a quack almost killed her son in the year 1996 literally uh, they killed okay saying there's witch and all and thus this particular woman Birbala uh, Rabba what she dislikes she stood her ground despite the threat of all this you know excommunication by the local shaman and all and thus she stood on her uh, this thing and she literally rescued over 50 women from being branded as witches before launching the mission called as Birbala against the man and this particular headache okay they used to kill guys saying some witch that this etc but she stood over that and she looked could literally rescue 50 women okay and uh, al along with this uh, women that is Birbala Rabba if you see another important person behind the legislation was the director general of police one Mr. Uh, Kuladhar Saika and thus uh, the deputy inspector general in uh, Koragjar he only launched the project called as project Prahari in the year 2001 okay which uh, literally blended the normal police uh, policing with social campaigns to check such kind of nonsense and menace in the uh, country and uh, city uh, state as a whole take care that is how Mission Virbala and Project Prahari came up. And these both are closely related because they, were, they stood strongly against Assam witch hunting. Okay. Very fine. Yes, Pavan, you were family with uh, Mission Prahari. Okay. Guys, let me check the internet once again. Give me a minute. It's fast, really. I'll, I'll uh, once again check it. Adira, is question uh, uh, <clears throat> not clear? Okay, uh, is it fine now? Yeah, Jadav audio is okay, but uh, thank you, thank you, Pushpendra. Yeah, somebody said, who is that? I, 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 I just saw a message just like that. Uh, Sri Ram Singh. See, uh, students, look at this. Sri Ram Singh has said something. Everyone dislike this video. Sri Ram, you dislike one time or two time, a thousand time. No problem. I'm very happy. I am not sitting here for your likes and dislike. I'm sitting here to deliver something. So even if you dislike, also that doesn't make a difference. Kya fayda yaar? Doesn't make a difference. I'm here to sitting here to teach the students. So what matters is the knowledge delivering. That that matters a lot, right? Guys, one second, some program is going on. That is why some sound is coming. So, do not bother that. Okay, very fine. And the next question is. The Pradhan Mandri Jen Vikas Kar uh, Karyakram refers to restructured multi-structural development program. 
What makes your Pradhan Mandri Gen Vikas Karyagram different from your multi cycle development program? Option number one tells the population criteria. It has been lowered to 50 percent. That is, the program will be implemented in such clusters of villages which have at least 50 percent of population of minority communities. And second one tells uh, towns which are literally found to be backward in terms of either or both parameters. That is, the basic amenities and socio economic indicators. These are the two parameters. They will be taken up as minority concentration towns. Third one tells, minorities under the program have been redefined as religious minorities within a particular state. Quickly give me the right answer guys. Yes, Farvez, thank you. Yes, Sudhir, yes. Okay, okay, Adira, I will. Thank you so much for all your uh, support guys. Oh, thank you so much, Jess. That means a lot. Uh, he, uh, okay, uh, next to Roman. Yeah, Roman is uh, such an amazing uh, teacher. Yeah, thank you so much. Uh, that comment ma matters a lot. Thank you, Sudhar. Thank you. Thank you so much for all your support, guys. And the answer for this question is... Yes, guys, quickly. Yeah, yes, here comes Agash with C, 2 and 3. But I can see uh, Shyam with A, 1 and 2. Really, look at the second question, a uh, second statement. The, uh, that is, towns which are found to be backward in terms of either or both parameters. And the parameters are amenities and socioeconomic indicators. Think and say. So, Ajay is saying only 3. Okay, Ajay. Thank you so much, Pawan Kumar. Okay, Sriram Singh has said, sorry. Okay, Sriram Singh, I've acknowledged it. Keep, be positive and happy learning. That's all I can tell you. Hashtag happy learning. Okay. Anyway, it's okay, Sriram. Forget about it. And please focus on the lessons. Yes, here comes Shailaja with D. Kishle with A. Okay. Sriram is saying D. Okay. Okay, Jesser, you want me to keep my image down. One second, Jesser. Yes, by the time you people give me your answers. Shubham, you can't skip. In my class, no student will say skip and no student will say no idea. You will try. In my class, for my students, I'm telling you, I can't and I won't is equal to I can and I will. This should be attitude, okay? Because you people are my students. So, it should be I can't and I won't is equal to I can and I will. So, give a try. Take care. Kanishka, I'm a PhD research call in economics. A PhD in economics. I'm doing my PhD research. Yes. And guys, and the answer is option number B. So yes, kudos to those who give the right answer. I think very few people give. Majority gave me A and C. I think Chandan gave. Yes, kudos to you, Chandan, with the right answer. Even Shivendra gave. Only two people gave, guys. Wow, that's amazing. Only two people gave the right answer. That's nice, guys. If you see... Only option number two is right. And even gave you clue. I even stressed on the point number two, right? Uh, basic amenities and social economic indicators. That was a clue actually I gave you people, but you didn't uh, listen to that. Okay, guys. And if you see literally, the Cabinet Committee on Economic Affairs, which was chaired recently, means in the previous year, 2018, if you see, they approved the proposal for renaming and restructuring something uh, that is your multi sector development program for something called as Pradhan Mandri Jan Vigas Karyakram. So actually your multi sector development program that was renamed as your Pradhan Mandri Jan Vigas Karyakram. Okay? They are not two separate schemes. It's just renamed. And thus your cabinet committee in economic affairs, they approved its continuation during the 14th Finance Commission. And thus the criteria for identifying such minority concentration towns and clusters of villages, they have been rationalized. How guys? By lowering the population percentage. Okay. That criteria for the minority communities. That is, if you see, earlier only those clusters of villages or group of villages which were having at least, say, 50% of population of the minority community were taken. But now if you see this particular criteria regarding the population, it has been lowered to 25%. In the question, they said what? They said that the population criteria has been lowered to 50%. That is wrong. Before it was 50%, now the criteria has been lowered to 25%. That is why the first one is wrong. Did you understand? Very fine. And the second one is right because it talks about uh, the amenities and socioeconomic indicators which should be taken up as minority concentration towns. Very fine, guys.
Yes, Odit. Uh, no, no, but I gave you, I gave you a clue this time. This time literally I stressed on the second po uh, point. So you could have easily understood that. Yes, Sri Ram Singh, no problem. Uh, that's perfectly fine. You acknowledged it. You said sorry. Very fine. Keep learning. No problem. And now the last question of today's session is the women entrepreneurship platform, a first of its kind unified access portal, which brings together women from different parts of India to realize their entrepreneurial aspiration is under the ages of which particular department or organization. Option A, tell Small Industry Development Bank of India, B, Rashtrapati Bhavan, C, FICCI and D, D, Yes, quickly give me the right answers guys. Okay, guys, the answers, please. Okay, even Sudhir and uh, somebody called uh, uh, Music uh, and Com. I don't know the name. They were correct. Okay, fine, fine. Uh, Sugrati, in the previous question, the third one is wrong because the minorities under your Pradhan Mandri Janvikas Karyagram now. They have been redefined as religious minorities within a particular state. That is wrong. It is not. They have not been redefined as religious minorities. Minorities are minorities. They have not come under the pretext of religious minorities. Just because the key word, key word religious minorities only third one is wrong. Very fine, Sukriti. Kanish, me kitna bar bolo uh, bolo Kanish ka I buy my qualification. You please focus on the class. Yes, here comes Udit with A, Nitesh with A, Amit D. Okay, uh, Swami, uh, Swabhiman Patel is A. Okay, Ak, Ak, Ashok is saying A. But I can see a different answer from uh, Adira. No, Adira is also A. Okay, Jesser is saying C. Okay, Jesser is going with a totally different answer. C, Federation of Indian Chamber of Commerce Industry. Wow. Kishle is again A. Kumar is also saying C. So I can get a lot of A and C answers. I can't get B and D. Okay. And yes, guys, the answer is option number D. So yes, kudos to those who get the right answer. It is option number D. That is Nithya. How many of you said D? Nobody said. Now, yes, yes. Uh, I can see Amit saying D. Wonderful, Amit. Even Sai Parnavi also said D. Wow, that's amazing. Yes, it is Nithya. The answer is Nith very simple question. Nithya Yog. See, look at the question. It is actually, it's under the ages of what? They are not asking who implemented it or who, uh, uh, you know, executed it. It's under the ages of what? That is Nithya. Let me tell you clearly why it is like that. You see, the idea of the platform, that is the women entrepreneurship platform, okay, to bring the women together from different parts of India, that was literally mooted or uh, initiated by Sri Amitabh Khan, who is the CEO of your Nithya. Even today, he is the CEO. Take care. He is, he is the one who brought out this particular idea and literally uh, he announced the setting up of women entrepreneurship platform in Nithya at the conclusion of a summit uh, that is called as GES, Global Entrepreneurship Summit. That was the eighth summit, TK, which was held in Hyderabad in the year 2017. And that too, it had an overreaching theme of women first, prosperity for all. They give more focus to the female gender. Just in simple terms, they want to make sure that this gender comes up, TK. And now, as an enabling platform, the women entrepreneurship platform that is built on three pillars. What are the three pillars? One is Icha Shakti, second is Gyan Shakti, and third is Karma Shakti. I have also asked a question based on Icha, Gyan and Karma Shakti in the MCQ related current affairs class based on government schemes. Again, it's a YouTube class I believe I did and same question was asked for you in a different way. So those who attended would have given the right answer anyways. Very fine. Oh yes, a lot of people have given the right answers. Okay. So very clear guys. Okay. So what is your scores guys? Quickly tell me the scores. So thank you so much my dear students. So please do rate, review, recommend, enroll and follow me for more such courses at an academy platform. So I'm teaching live on an academy plus and this is my profile there. So if you want to get the unacademy subscription, you can use my referral code that is nisha.nujumudi and get a discount of 10 to 20 percent. Okay. Because you will be able to get access to a wide variety of courses. Because in YouTube, you will be able to have access only to some selected courses, right? But to have a complete, uh, you know, selected courses and also to make sure that all your doubts are cleared. Because exclusively, we have a doubt clearing session and all. For that, your plus course will really help you if you are a serious aspirant. So yes, guys, uh, for that, uh, if you have any doubt in getting the subscription, you can even message me via my Telegram channel or uh, my Facebook Messenger also. Take care. I'll help you out in getting more discounts. 
So yes, thank you so much, my dear students. So how many people give the right answers? Let me see who is going to get this happiness diary. Yes, and this happiness diary is having a message also. Try not to become a man of success, but rather try to become a man of value. That is the heading of this happiness diary. So it has a lot of beautiful quotings, which will be a source of motivation for all the UPSC aspirants. And it's all again from Japan. So let me see who is getting it. So yes, here comes Kishle. Two on four, no problem. Shivendra is also two on four. Wonderful. Aditya Kumar is honestly three. Wow. Udit six on ten. Wow, Udit, that's nice. So there, no problem. Only two is wrong. And next time we can make it full on full. Yes, Suri, you had a question, right? Why planning commission was replaced by Nithya? Okay, Suri, I'll explain to you. See, Suri, actually planning commission, where did it start? If you see, in the year 1950, right? Actually, following the Soviet Union of Russia, actually, Russia was the first country, nation, I can tell you, which came up with the planning for the nation as a whole, for the country as a whole, right? So, thus, uh, taking inspirations from, uh, you know, uh, Soviet Union, that is Russia only, our country, India, adopted a planning model. That was in the year 1938 by uh, Vishweshiraya, okay? What they do is that he launched a program called as 10-year planning program, taking into consideration the development of industrial sectors. They, they uh, took the idea from the Russia's uh, uh, model for national plan as a whole. After that, again, uh, we had the Bombay plan, the 1945 Bombay plan, uh, people's plan and all. And finally, after the Sarvodhya plan of 1915, in the year 1951, officially, we had the planning commission. But in the planning commission, it was a centrally focused scheme, I can tell you, because we had the five-year plans. First five-year plan, second, third, fourth, after 12th, we had, right? But in every five-year plan for a period of five years, they used to target industry or agriculture or service sector. They used to give focus. But though they targeted a, a growth of 5% or 6% also, many a times they couldn't achieve the target. Only in very few years, they could achieve the target. And now it was a centralized kind of thing. It was a top-down view. The center will give orders to state. It was like that. Whereas Niti Aayog means uh, it is actually a bottom-up view of the economy, I can tell you, whereby there is something called decentralized planning. That uh, That is every state is having a, a kind of say uh, uh, on the plans or policies of the center as a whole. So Niti Aayog is actually a holistic thing whereby the, the state is also involved. So actually a kind of, uh, I can tell you, a proper combination of this union and state government is brought in under Niti Aayog in the case of planning and all the schemes and all. Take care. That is why they said that your, uh, you know, Niti Aayog is better than your planning commission. Very fine. Is it clear, Suri? Yes, Kanish, kudos to you for the right answer. I didn't see that. Yes, so there my permanent, yeah, I do come uh, live for YouTube platforms from 6.30 to 7.30. Okay, I have some um, a number of sessions to be completed. So I'll come uh, daily at 6.30 to 7.30 for YouTube sessions. But my plus timings are different. For my current affairs course and all, it is different. It is 8 to 9.30 a.m. and all. If you are uh, getting the plus subscription, it will really, really benefit you. So because you will get access to a lot of live structured courses. Yes, monkeys, that's wonderful. You've got 8 on 10. That's kudos to you. Yes, I have some other doubts also. Uh, some people ask me doubts. Okay. Jadav, my telegram link, you can ask Aditya. Aditya or I think Aditya is there. Farvez is there. Bija is there. Nidhi, Sukriti and all is there. You can just ask them. And somebody kindly post it. Okay, Suri, fine. Yes, uh, Ashok has asked a question. What is it, Ashok? One second. Interoperability problem, right? So you want to know about that, Ashok? I think yesterday also you asked. Because of lack of time, I couldn't uh, explain to you that I believe. Uh, see, Ashoga, uh, interoperability problem. Actually, what is interoperability? If you see, it's the property that allows for unrestricted sharing of resources. So there are certain, uh, there are no restrictions at all. It is the, actually, it allows, it's the property which allows for certain unrestricted uh, sharing of resources. Between whom? Between different systems. Take care. To put in very simple terms, I can tell you this interoperability uh, problem. Now, nah, actually is the ability. This uh, interoperability is the ability of two or more components. Or I can tell you it is actually uh, the ability of a, a system to exchange information. When two or more components or when two or more systems can exchange certain information now nah, and literally that they can use the information to, uh, that has been exchanged. That is called as intero, uh, per, uh, interoperability. Very fine. 
Is it clear? Okay, Ashok. Yes, Sudhir, please ask your doubts. The time is up actually, but it's okay. Please ask. I'll try to clear your doubts. Thank you so much, Ajay. Uh, 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 yes, Ajadav else, what you do is that uh, after the class, I'll post the telegram link under the comment section. Okay, you can join it. Thank you so much, Sakshi. Okay, Ashok, any other class? Uh, sorry, any other doubt? Yes, Naveen has asked for freshers how to prepare current affairs. See, Naveen, whenever you read a current affairs topic, Naveen, make sure that you write the topic. Uh, uh, for example, if it is again any scheme, when the scheme was launched, the aim, the purpose, by whom, is it a center or a state sponsored scheme, the benefits, the targeted people, and also the uh, constraint. This is enough. That is more than enough. And also, uh, is there any uh, kind of, uh, you know, way forward? If it, the scheme is not functioning properly, is there any way forward to improve it? Note down those points and revise. And the best way to prepare for current affairs, I can tell you, uh, Naveen, is through a MCQs. Because you will understand what sort of questions you'll get for exam. Also, you'll be able to identify the keyword. You will not make mistakes. Because even though you know the concept also, sometimes now, because of certain keywords and all, you have a tendency to make mistakes. So when you practice more and more questions, you will are uh, able to understand that. At the same time, in the explanation part, a detailed coverage of that particular topic will also be given. So it's a quick revision of your current affairs. That's the one. Uh, that's the way in which you can uh, cover it very fast. Okay, Naveen. It's actually study less, practice more, revise more. Use this strategy by UPSC. It will take you to greater heights. Yes, somebody called motivational uh, king has asked. Yes, you can join me at the Telegram channel. All the notification you will get there. Uh, Sudhir, EXIM means export and import. Okay, the full full form of uh, uh, the short uh, full form of X, X, EXIM is export and import. Okay, very fine. Yes, Sudhir, please ask me. I can't. Yes, what is your other doubt? Yes, Ajay, what is it? Any other doubts, guys? That's it. Um. Yes, uh, somebody has asked me another uh, doubt that is Adi Aditya Kumar. Now, Aditya Kumar is having a doubt for Pradhan Mandri uh, PMVJ, right? Okay, Aditya, listen. Uh, Aditya Kumar, uh, you asked about PMJVK. So, now PMJVK is Pradhan Mandri Jen Vikas Karyakram. Uh, that actually addresses certain deficits. I can uh, develop in deficits in certain identified minority communities. Okay, let me put in more simple terms to you. <coughs> Actually, in order to address certain development deficits or problems in the identified minority consonant area, some area where the minority people are focused now, to address certain development issues or deficits there only, your Pradhan Mandri Jen Vikas uh, program has come up. Actually, that is uh, uh, that uh, that particular scheme now. It is re, uh, it has been restructured from an other scheme. Your multi structural development program now that was renamed to Pradhan Mandri Jen Vikas Karyakram. Okay. And now the identification of all these minority, uh, you know, areas will be uh, through your Pradhan Mandri Jan Vigas uh, Karyakram scheme. It will be done how? On the basis of presence of a substantial population, uh, okay, who are notified on the as the minority communities as per your 2011 census. Very fine. Uh, so through this, now that particular area will be developed. It will also provide a better uh, socio-economic conditions. I can tell you. Uh, for these minority communities, particularly in the field of education, health, skill development, etc. Okay, as compared to the present situation they are having. Just to improve them, guys. To bring up the minority communities only, Pradhan Mandri Jan Vikas Karyakram has been brought out. Very fine, Ashok. Sorry, very fine, Aditya Kumar. And this uh, Pradhan Mandri uh, Jan Vikas Karyakram, na, uh, Aditya, I can tell you, it will be implemented under the Minority Concentration District Headquarter. Uh, that and you have some uh, there and uh, then there are certain blocks also in there also it will be implemented take care even there are certain backward clusters or groups now for that also this particular program will be implemented very fine 
Yes, any other doubts? Yes, Sachin, I just said how to prepare for current affairs just uh, a couple of minutes before. You can just uh, watch the recorded video of that. I just told that now. Yeah, Pradeep, thank you for reminding me the 14th question regarding Institute of Eminence. Guys, let me just go back to that question. I'll tell you why it was wrong. See, in the question now, it is said that each institution, be it a public or private, each institution means it consists of both. Take care. Who are selected as IOE, they will get financial assistance up to 1000 crore over a period of 5 years. Actually, now if you see only your, uh, uh, you know, government institution, they will get a financial assistance up to 1000 crore, but not for the private ones, only public will get. That is why the first one is wrong. Did you understand, guys? Actually, in that question, we had some doubts now because here it is the keyword is each institution, which means that both public and private because the institution of eminence consists of public and private institutions. Take care. But if they, they uh, literally they didn't mention it as public institutions, that is why it is wrong. Very fine. Okay, Shajila, fine, fine. Guys, it's already 8 now. I have another session at uh, An Academy Plus. So, quickly, your doubts, please. Yes, somebody has asked me. I think Amal has asked. Now, yes, Amal, uh, you have asked regarding uh, blockchain technology now, Amal. Okay. <clears throat> So now, Amal, if you see what is this blo uh, in blockchain technology, if you see it has become one of, uh, in, in all your news, you can regularly see about this blockchain technology, right? And this is actually this blockchain technology came up in news with the emergence of something called as crypto cur cri cryptocurrencies, like a Bitcoin. Because of that, really, this blockchain technology was in news. Take care. Now, this technology is disrupting all the markets, I can tell you. Uh, see, literally changing the way we do our day-to-day -day business and all. And thus, this blockchain technology is literally changing the world. I'll tell you in simple terms what is blockchain technology. Take care. Now, if in simple terms, uh, 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 Amil, if you see blockchain technology means it is actually a digital ledger. A digital ledger is called as a blockchain technology in simple terms. Fine. And now, what is a ledger? See, in simple terms, ledger means actually it's a book, right? containing accounts to which your debits and credits will be posted from the books of original entry. So thus, this blockchain, uh, since it is called as a digital ledger means, it is actually a digitalized, decentralized and public, uh, you know, ledger. Okay. In simple terms, that is called as blockchain, uh, uh, blockchain. TK. Fine. And if you see in the year, this blockchain, uh, uh, um, um, if you see uh, in the year 2008, Literally, it was invented by uh, Satoshi, okay, a person called, I do not know the full name. It is actually Satoshi uh, in the year 2008. They only introduced or developed, invented this technology called as blockchain technology. Why? Because they want to use this cryptocurrency called as bitcoins as its public transaction ledger. That is why in the year 2018, they came up with this blockchain technology. TK. And when they invented now, they wanted to make sure that uh, this particular uh, technology, it will create the decentralized bitcoin ledger, okay. That is, it will do this blockchain. I can tell you, it will allow the users to control the. So, for example, if some user is using the blo uh, blockchain technology, means through the technology, the user will be able to control the money, their own money. Okay. So, for example, if I am using means, I'll be able to control my own money so that no third party, okay, no third party, not even the government also, they will be able to have an access to that uh, that money or they'll be able to monitor it. It is completely whole and whole my privacy. Okay. Very fine. And later after this, now the inventor of this uh, uh, Bitcoin and all, uh, Mr. Satoshi, he disappeared in the year 2011. A lot of issues were again going on and all. TK, did you understand? And in, in simple terms, once again, I'll tell you, uh, Amil, if you see, your blockchain technology, now it allows the computers to record information, whereas the internet technology, that literally allows computers to exchange information. If using an internet technology, if computers can exchange information, using a blockchain technology, you will be able to record, the computer can record information. That is called as blockchain technology and internet technology in simple terms. Very fine. And they use a lot of computer codes. Be it your blockchain technology, be it your internet technology, they use a lot of computer codes. Highly technical. See, can. Yes, Deepa. It's uh, Satoshi Nak uh, Nakamoto. Exactly. That is his name. Yes. Thank you for reminding me. Is it fine? Perfect, Amal. 
okay thank you so much my dear students already uh, in one and a half hour now it is i have a plus course so bye bye thank you so much my dear students i hope all your doubts are cleared now see nitesh has asked is world happiness index important yes nitesh it is important okay you uh, because uh, from any of the indexes you can get uh, questions very fine thank you so much uh, my dear students so please do rate review and give valuable feedbacks at the end of the session and see you tomorrow at same timing for youtube session that is from 6:30 to 7:30 part 3 of the session will be done the okay, lecture will be done that is the mcqs on economics related current affairs so bye bye thank you so much my dear students i hope you enjoy the session yes pradeep you want to know what swift society in world class in instead of uh, financial transactions okay uh, you want to uh, know it with uh, reference to your pnb a uh, fraud uh, fraud scheme and all is it with reference to that today morning only pradeep i was explain regarding swift uh, in my plus class i had a crash course in that way was literally explain regarding